Bluetooth is a radio technology that runs in the 2.4 gigahertz unlicensed band. And there are standards for communications between 1 meter and 10 meters. And there are variations that run at 1 megabit per second, which was 700 kilobits per second in practice. And then 3 megabits per second, which was 2 megabits per second in practice. And there's a variation that uses Wi-Fi modems to communicate at high speeds. And more interestingly, there's a variation that uses low power so that we might start seeing Bluetooth used to connect, for example, heart monitors to a data collection station. If you read the standards, they talk about Pico nets and personal area networks because in theory you can have eight devices communicating on the same Bluetooth channel. In practice, it's used for point-to-point -point communications. There are only two devices involved and it's at a range of maximum 10 meters. Bluetooth is a spread spectrum technology like CDMA, but the spread spectrum part is done in a different way. With CDMA, we're transmitting codes that are 64 bits long. So the actual bit rate, also called the chipping rate, is 64 times higher than it normally would be. And so this has the effect of spreading the energy across a wider frequency band. We don't do that in Bluetooth. With Bluetooth, there are 79 carriers defined, and the devices hop in a particular pattern amongst the 79 carriers every 625 microseconds. And a particular hop sequence is called a channel in Bluetooth. And the channel is determined by the master. There are masters and slaves in a Bluetooth world. And the master decides what the frequency hopping pattern is, and it decides this based on its Bluetooth address, which is like a MAC address. It's a hard-coded number on the Bluetooth chip. Every 625 microseconds, we change to a different frequency. And that time period of 625 microseconds is called a slot. The master transmits in even-numbered slots, and the slave transmits in odd-numbered slots. To set up communications, devices send information requests and respond to them on a special channel called the Inquiry Scan Channel. And remember, a channel is a particular hop sequence amongst the 79 carriers. To make a device discoverable means that it listens on the Inquiry Scan Channel. To connect to a device, you fire up the user interface on your smartphone, for example, and this is going to show a list of the devices that have responded on the inquiry scan channel. And if the device you want isn't there, that means that you have to make it discoverable, which means that it will respond to a request on the inquiry scan channel. If you want to connect to a device, what you do is you click on that device's name in the list of discovered devices on your user interface. And what it's doing is then sending messages on that device's paging channel. A paging channel is a specific channel, but the hop sequence is derived from the target's Bluetooth address. And we use this communication to find out what the capabilities of the device are and agree on which ones we're going to use. And then when that's set up, the communications then go to the channel defined by the master. The master defines what the hop sequence is and tells the slave what it is via a channel access code at the beginning of every one of the packets. The master decides when a bit starts. The master defines when the sequence starts. And the master defines when a packet starts. The advantages of using a frequency hopping technique are the same as for CDMA is you can have multiple people transmitting in the same frequency band in the same place at the same time. The chances of having two pairs of devices using the same hop sequence, using the same frequencies at the same time all the time is zero because the hop sequence is derived from the Bluetooth address of the master device. The chances that we would have two pairs of devices using the same frequency at the same time once in a while is statistically very low. And so we can have multiple pairs of devices communicating at the same time over the same 79 megahertz of frequency. There's also an adaptive variation that allows the hop sequence to be modified to skip carriers where there's a bad signal-to-noise ratio to improve the overall bit rate.
some examples of what Bluetooth is used for. The most common is to connect a smartphone to a remote microphone and speaker system for hands-free operation of your smartphone. And in this case, Bluetooth has to support two things. It has to support call control messages and it has to support the actual communication of the media, the digitized voice. So we've got call control messages like caller ID and off hook and on hook and directory services as well. And then the actual coding of the voice would be a different type of communication session. Another application for Bluetooth is to communicate to a remote amplifier and speaker system. So you don't need to have CDs and a CD player anymore. You put all of your music on your smartphone or your iPod and then connect via Bluetooth to a Bluetooth receiver that's plugged into an amplifier that's plugged into speakers. In this case we have a different set of capabilities required. One of them is the capability to transmit stereo high fidelity music instead of voice and it's just one way. And the control functions are a lot simpler like volume up would be one of the control functions. And it's an interesting illustration of the difference between digital and analog. In an analog radio system, if you pressed volume up, it would actually make the signal stronger. With a digital system like Bluetooth, when you're talking to a remote amplifier, when you press the volume up on your smartphone, that isn't making the signal going to the device stronger. It's sending a digital control message to the far end amplifier saying, turn your output power up. And of course, it's wonderful having both of these capabilities in your car. So your smartphone is both your music player and your telephone. And you don't need to keep CDs in your car anymore. You just play the music off of your smartphone. And when it's playing music, it's sending stereo high fidelity to your car sound system. And then when there's a phone call, it changes to two-way voice communications between your car stereo system. Bluetooth can be used to connect a device to a smartphone for internet access as well. All of these different capabilities are called profiles, and a profile is a set of different control and media communication capabilities. But with Bluetooth, we're pretty much talking about 2 megabits per second if you've got the 3 megabit per second version of Bluetooth running. 2 megabits per second used to sound like a lot, but now 2 megabits per second doesn't sound like very much. My cell phone as a tethered modem is 5 megabits per second, and yet Bluetooth can only do 2 megabits per second. So that means that if we're using Bluetooth to connect a laptop to your cell phone to get into the cell phone's internet access, that the Bluetooth link is going to be the weak link in the chain. It's going to be a bottleneck that slows things down because the Bluetooth link is only 2 megabits per second and then the cellular internet link is 5 megabits per second. So Bluetooth appears to be useful for local communication to peripheral devices but not for data communications connections. It appears that Wi-Fi, the 802.11 wireless LANs, are the devices that will get us up to the gigabit per second range.